what you see and you need to kill today that you may see the Lord. The message today, the devil come to you in three missions. To steal, to kill and destroy. He come to steal, to kill and destroy. Where am I coming from? Where am I coming from? I am coming from here. I'm saying when the devil give you good life. Where am I coming from? Where am I coming from? I'm talking about when the devil doesn't matter what things he gave you. It doesn't matter how he make his life good. He make it good for you. But his mission is to steal, to kill and destroy you. It is steal and to kill and destroy your joy. It is steal and to kill and destroy your career. It is to steal to kill and destroy your marriage. It is to steal and to, to, to steal to kill and destroy your, your, your love of God. Those are the mission. No one should cheat you. The way to the devil may look enticing, but the end you'll be crying. The way to God may have a lot of hardship, but the Bible says God has come to you so that you may have life and have it in completeness. John 10.10 10, God come to you that you may have life and have it in abundance, in its fullness, in its completeness. If God allow you to be tested, he has a good plan for you. The Bible says, in Jeremiah 29 verses 11, God has good plan for us. He has good plan for you, brother. God has good plan for you, sister. God has good plan for you. In Jeremiah, book of Jeremiah 29 verses 11, He has good plan for you to give you a future filled with the hope. When you are going through all that trial, that mountain that is ahead of you, that hardship, that circumstance, that thing you don't have a clue, that thing that is tormenting you, that thing, that situation that is you don't even know how you're going to come out of it, God may allow it for you to, if you stand firm, stick to God, God will make you grow and will have good plan for you to use that situation to see the opportunity you can use it to grow and rise to another staircase in the Lord to God and in the Christian maturity. Sometimes, turn, you need to see the challenge or the hardship in, the, in, the, in, another, in another perspective. See it in a, an opportunity perspective. See that mountain ahead of you as a, as, a, as a blessing perspective where you will glow and rise to another ladder and mature and be a counselor and helping people who will be going through the same thing. God, when the challenges come, the vision or the view and the opinion and the wish and the prayer for God is for you to come out as a victorious Christian. That you may say, like Joseph, I have full fight a good fight of faith. I was sold by my brothers. I didn't leave God. I was put in prison by being lured by Potiphar's wife so that he, he accuses me. I want to sleep with him and he ran away and he was put to prison and he still continued to dream and his dream saw him out of prison and he became a prime minister in the country that he was sold. Say, I am like Joseph. That you will come out victorious like Joseph. You will come out victorious like Job. Job was put in a, in a hot seat by the enemy. And the enemy asked for permission from God. Give me this man. He say he is an upright man. Give me this man. And I show you he's not. And the enemy stole his children. He stole his property, he stole his wealth, he stole everything Job had and God had already talked with the devil and agreed don't touch Job, don't touch Job, you may try him but don't touch him and wife of Job and Job himself, they did know there was an agreement with God and the Satan had requested to try Job, but they didn't know, but Job, though when, when the wife of Job asked her, 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 her husband 
that uh, uh, you why is God letting you go through this why don't you curse God but Job didn't know that God had allowed that situation and he continues Job did not curse God but he continued to say God you are awesome you never fail you are always faithful you are a protector and Job came out victorious see that challenge right in you see that mountain ahead of you see that thing that is disturbing your mind that is putting you a lot of stress see yourself like Job, like Job that you come out victorious like Job because the devil make, always is wanting to steal to kill and destroy your joy the devil wants to steal to kill and destroy your marriage the devil wants to steal to kill and destroy your plan for the future. The devil wants to steal, to kill and destroy your light on the Lord to God. He wants you to see darkness so you give up. He wants to steal, to kill and destroy Jesus in you. He wants to kill, to steal and destroy the seed of, of life that have been put by Jesus in your heart. When the devil comes to you, when he lights your mind, when he give you a lot of pain, a lot of put down, a lot of confusion, a lot of lies showing you and giving you a lot of evidence and convincing evidence his mission is to steal and to kill and to destroy everything that God has best bestowed on you. Everything God has put in your life as a blessing. Every blessing God can put on your way. The devil want to kill and destroy it. You want to steal, to kill and destroy your career. You want to steal and to kill and to destroy your interest, your moral to work, your efficacy, your self-efficacy, your self-sufficiency, your self-motivation. You are everything that make you go. That any you want to steal, to kill and destroy your button of life, the button that you will press and you keep going. You want to kill, to steal, to steal and destroy. Your spa of life, the key, the imagination, where you put the key and you keep going. That one has, you want to steal. You want to steal. The devil comes to you with three mission to steal, to kill, and destroy. The devil can steal your wife. The devil can steal your husband. You can be living in the same house, but your husband went a long time ago. Your wife went long time ago. You are living in the same house, but you are not together. There is no connection. There is no network. For a phone to work, for you to communicate from person, from one point A to B, there have to be a network. For you to communicate. There are many marriages, there is no communication, no chemistry, nothing going on. And anybody, everyone is going to his own way. The devil stole your marriage. The devil stole your spouse. Through evil, negative mind. He give negative mind. And he put a convincing evidence, a convincing thing, a very convincing authenticity and authenticizing and trying to prove everything that your mind look sticky and headed. Long headed. The Bible says you have ears you don't hear. You have eyes you don't see. You read the word you don't hear. It's like a word that fell in the ground picked by bird. You don't hear anything. You don't see anything. You have ears you don't hear. You have eyes you don't see. Because you'll be blinded by the enemy through lies. The devil stole your joy. You may be living in a lot of a lot of depression, a lot of stress because of something happened to you in the past or something ahead of you that is keeping you a lot of a lot of uh, mourning, a lot of stress. The devil stole. The devil stole your joy. The devil stole your blessing. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, that a dragon stands behind a woman who was about to give birth and to deliver her child when she is about to be born. He wait just at the door where the baby is about to come to, to grab the child, to steal. The devil wait when you are about to be blessed and steal your blessing. The devil wait when you are about to settle in marriage and steal your marriage. The devil wait when you're about to lay 
the standard of being blessed, even it's financially, even economically, and still you are blessing. The devil wait when your family is about to be united and steal the unity. The devil come to you in the remission to steal, to kill and destroy. Don't hear to his sweet talk. Don't listen to the devil lies. Don't listen to the devil sweet talking. Don't listen to the devil flirting. Don't listen to the devil whisper. But I'll do this and keep quiet. Don't listen to the devil. He give you something nice, enticing and carry you sell up. That it is aimed for, your, for him to steal, to kill and destroy something that is about to be born from God. There is a blessing on your way. The devil is a spirit. He can see and he will steal. And I tell you, you will be in trouble if you give in. Remember Jesus' temptation. Jesus had overcome through fasting in 40 days. When he was about to say hallelujah, thank you Jesus for the 40 days. Thank you God for enabling to fast and pray for the task ahead of me. The devil was waiting at the door, ready to take the blessing of Jesus. That if you are God, you know Jesus was hung, hung, angry, hungry. He had not eaten for 40 days. If you are God, he wanted God to see himself is powerful. The devil you use whatever is you are good in at to test you, to destroy you. Use whatever is good you love most or whatever your strength is. He can use it to make you feel elevated and pride. So he steal your blessing. He knew Jesus is son of God and is God. And he wanted Jesus to, get, to feel proud of his power that he changed bread and he eat that bread. Oh, he can give it. And he also gave him that he can give him all his land and wealth. The devil gave Jesus meat pie, chocolate. I can give you all this land, all these things if you worship me. The same things, these are the last days. The devil is pouring money everywhere. If you want to get quickly steam, enter into the devil kingdom. He is rooting property. He is rooting money. Secret power of the devil is at work. And don't be, the Bible says, don't be happy of evildoer or the successful of the evildoer. The Bible says it is like a flower in a plant. It will fade in a while. Don't be scared of the successful blessing that people are getting. If you don't know where they are getting from, be contented with what you have. Whether you, have, whether you are rich or not, be contented with what you have. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, it's better to have little with peace than a lot with a lot of trouble. You may invite devil in your life, he give you a lot of riches, then in the future you'll be crying full of trouble because those things, they are not yours, they are the devil. And when you get an easy life, always the Bible says we work hard, we have to sweat as Christian. We have to sweat. Since Adam and Eve made sin, we have to sweat. No free food, no free money. Free money, be careful. Pray, work hard. And Jesus is going to bless you. When you feel you are trapped, pray. The devil come in the remission to steal, to kill and destroy. Jesus was about to get his blessing after 40 for 40 days. And the devil was waiting at the door of his blessing to test him. To steal his blessing, of the spiritual blessing, of the winning, of the prayer life, of the 40 days trial, uh, of uh, fasting. And Jesus was ready to fight the task of hell. The devil came to you to steal, to kill and destroy. The devil has stolen something from you. You don't have joy. That You need to stick. If at all, in, at this point in time, you feel so down. The devil is trying to steal your joy. You need to do what you do best in the kingdom of God. If you are good in singing, sing like King David till the cloth come off. If you are good in encouraging, encourage. Swim in the deep ocean. Swim in the blessing of God. And the devil will lose the battle. Walk in the spiritual man. Because the aim of the devil is to press you down. There is somebody who sang the song, I'm trading my sorrow for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my pain for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my persecution for the joy of the Lord. I may be, I may be pressed down, but not finished. I may be 
I may be forsaken, but not abandoned. He said he's trading everything for the joy of the Lord. Trade that, that sadness for the joy of the Lord. Trade that persecution. Trade whatever the devil has stolen for the joy of the Lord. Enjoy Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Great things are done by men who are pressed down. Great, great things are done by weak, weary men who are ready to be used by God at the time of their highest peak of their trial. Paul wrote a lot of book in the Bible when he was saying always in his ending, uh, ending message, I am an ambassador in chain. What did Paul mean? I am an ambassador in chain. Paul meant that he was living in prison, spiritual prison and even physical prison. He was inconspicuated by the devil. He was always in prison and in, in collide with the Roman laws because they didn't want Jesus. He always said, I am an ambassador in chain. Paul did great things when he was going through hard life. Many people, when they are going through hard life, they do wonders, especially in the kingdom of God. Even in the secular life, you see even people who have gone through hard life, they do something, they may sing. The same in the kingdom of God. Other people enter into the full-time ministry because God uses people who are rolling spirit. The brokenhearted. God said when you are full, don't forget me. God knew when you are full, when you are blessed, you may forget God. That is hard for a rich man to enter heaven. It's as, it's as hard as coming or going through a needle hole. Because when you are full, you tend to be contented. With, you don't need the spiritual blessing. So, when you are blessed, remember God and pray more too. The devil steals everything. He comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus has come that you may have life and have it in fullness. Remember what God, when you are going through hard life, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God will not allow some things to happen in your life that cannot, can overtake you. God will not allow any temptation that is above your, your ability when you pray to Jesus. We pray to Abba Father. We pray to Jesus to save us from the forest near. When we pray the power of Jesus, the Bible says not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. We remake it. When you depend on your power, the devil will beat you 9-0. Walk with the Spirit of God. When the devil is tempting you, say 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. That is no temptation that I can come to me that I, I cannot bear. Every temptation, I can be able to overcome it through the power of God. Remember, the devil come to you in the remission to steal, to kill, and destroy. But God come to you that you may have life and have it in abundance. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God have good plan for you. It doesn't matter what man said is ahead of you. God have good plan for you. It doesn't matter what is that who's here that is standing on your way. When you remove it, God has good plan for you. It doesn't matter what the devil is, is, is whispering to you. It doesn't matter what trials you're going through. God have good plan for you. God is using that thing for your elevation in the kingdom of God. God want to bless you. The thief come to steal and destroy, but God come that you may have life and have it in abundance. So rest trust in Jesus because he's the only one who has good mission for us. In the name of Jesus, you be blessed. <coughs>